From Plimpton Street, this is News Talk. I'm Frank So. Ricky R. Rizzo, the fourth class of 2025, is a rising junior at Harvard College. So I come from North Carolina. I come from the South. He remembers his grandmother living off of a highway named after Jefferson Davis, the first and only president of the Confederacy. Coming up north, I did not think that this would be, I thought this was something that I didn't have to deal with. But across Harvard, buildings are named after former slave owners. And I guess you call me naive, um, but uh, I, I was you know, so surprised to learn about this. Razone is the president of the Generational African American Students Association, one of the student groups that has called on Harvard to seriously reconsider the names of its buildings and institutions. But those same names are also really formative to the way some students remember their college experience. This academic year, Harvard has received two student petitions asking that the university dename certain buildings on its campus, calling on Harvard to make a move. How did we get here, and where do we go next? We talked to our reporters to find out. Hi, I'm Nia Ella Rockway, and I cover college administration for the Harvard Crimson. Hi, my name is Natalie K. Bandura. I normally cover the Harvard Undergraduate Association. Today we're here to talk about Harvard students' moves to request that the university dename certain buildings on its campus due to problematic affiliations uh, of the building's namesakes. Could you tell us a little bit about the two waves of, of student requests that have come through in the past academic year? The first request was submitted in the fall, and that was the, for the Sackler Art Museum and Building that was named after Arthur M. Sackler and his family, who started Purdue Pharma that created and marketed an opioid known as OxyContin. The students who submitted the petition were members of the Harvard College Overdose Prevention and Education students. Part of the Sackler petition included a section where students could provide comment about their personal experiences with the Sackler building. Perhaps some had some sort of history with opioids in their family or some sort of personal connection to it. And then it also included a section where the petitioners had administered a poll to undergraduate students at the university about their perspectives. And they got 316 respondents on that poll. And out of them, all but six, so 310 of those 316 respondents, supported the denaming of the Sackler Museum and Building. The second petition is for Winthrop House, which is one of the upperclassmen houses here at Harvard. In February, GASA, the Generation African American Students Association, in collaboration with the natives at Harvard College group, disseminated a petition calling for the denaming of Winthrop. So Winthrop House is a upperclassman house that houses sophomores through seniors. It sits along the Charles River. Named after two Winthrops, both of whom owned slaves. The older John Winthrop was governor of Massachusetts for 16 years, and he was an instrumental leader in the Pequot War. And he personally enslaved at least seven people and contributed to the creation of the legal code that legalized slavery in Massachusetts. And then the younger John Winthrop was the great grandson of the first John Winthrop. And he served as both a Harvard professor and as Harvard president. And he personally enslaved two individuals of African descent. Of course, so what were the circumstances of that petition? And what process is it currently going through to make its way through the bureaucratic ranks? In March, the beginning of March, they submitted that petition. That petition had acquired more than 600 signatures, including those of 45 descendants of the John Winthrop's. So in 2020, President Lawrence Bacow created a committee to basically create these procedures that the university or the FAS would use to evaluate student proposals for denaming. The committee consisted of 16 members, which included former university president Drew Gilpin Faust, who chaired the group. This committee was only functioning for about a year and their whole purpose was to speak to Harvard affiliates, get kind of community opinion and create a set of criteria that, you know, would be used by future committees when evaluating specific denaming proposals. For instance, the committee has to determine to what extent the name creates a harmful environment. They have to consider the historical evidence, why the name was originally selected, discern how central the name is to the experience of Harvard affiliates, consider if the namesake's criticized behavior is a significant component of that person's legacy when viewed in the full context of their life, of the namesake's life, and whether the actions would have been objectionable in the time of the namesake. Harvard economics professor and Lowell House faculty dean David Labson was on the committee and we spoke to him about what that process was like. He talked a lot about how the group 
got a lot of different opinions from other stakeholders, not just those members of the committee, including students, staff, faculty, alumni, Cambridge residents, and historians throughout this whole process. And he told us, quote, it was a highly consultative process, and I thought it was a very fruitful set of conversations because people really were listening to one another. We can feel confident that the community is shaping the way that the Sackler petition is being reviewed. As far as we know, they don't have an idea of specifics of where the petition is at. Of course. What were the circumstances of that petition? And what process is it currently going through to make its way through the bureaucratic ranks? We have seen alumni have a mixed bag of opinions on the Winthrop House petition. Alumni have ties to Winthrop House, especially those who lived there in their undergraduate years. It's associated with some people think of as some of the best years of their lives. I think that some of the alumni are hesitant to support anything that they might feel to be disparaging of that memory. So, Gerasimos and Sandulas, who was class of 61, talked to us in an email about how Winthrop carries an intimate meaning associated with his time at Harvard that kind of goes beyond the legacies of the namesakes of Winthrop and how he doesn't connect those two in a way. And he said that, quote, This initiative will provoke a visceral, not intellectual, negative reaction in most of us, whether such reaction is explicitly stated or not, for the name is inextricably tied to our overall experience at Winthrop House, and we do not want that experience to be in any way degraded. Definitely a good amount of alumni who did support denaming Winthrop, or at least the idea of looking into it. Some students, such as T.J. Sue E. Barode, class of 24, also tie a lot of meaning to Winthrop House. She sees the house as something that can be a safe haven to students. However, she takes a different perspective on this, seeing that it can provide even more reason to pay attention to the namesake's historical roots because the house carries so much meaning to some students. She said, quote, What it symbolizes for some is the remembrance that will provoke recollection of atrocities that were done in the past. And there's mixed reviews among current students as well. We heard from some students who felt more strongly in favor of either the Winthrop or Sackler petition. Of course. What are some of those reasons then that students have brought up as in support of or against the denaming process? We heard from some students who felt that Winthrop, the John Winthrops in in particular, should be kind of judged by the standards of their own time, which is an argument that that is kind of heard often. We heard from some other students who felt that the net contribution of the Winthrops was positive, and for that reason they felt like maybe um, it wasn't the right decision to, to remove the name. And generally, I would say student opinion on the Sackler petition was mostly in favor. And we actually did speak to one of the descendants of John Winthrop. So the descendant is a student at the Harvard Divinity School, had signed the petition to name Winthrop after studying and researching the Winthrops. And a quote from when we spoke to her was, quote, it feels personal to understand the privileges I was born into are connected to the taking of land and labor from black and native people. So where are we at now? Are we sort of waiting for the petitions to run their course? What next steps can we look forward to? What we know is that both petitions are currently being reviewed by administrators. We know that the Winthrop petition is currently in the substantive review stage, which means that all of the boxes, basic boxes were checked, everything was complete that needed to be complete. The petitioners had standing to submit their petition. And we don't know when this process is going to end because in the Harvard University process for considering requests for denaming information, In the information provided by that process, it says, quote, the decision to proceed to further review does not bind the university to any particular timetable. As noted in the report, these considerations are likely to be complex, and the process puts a premium on retaining the flexibility to undertake reviews in the order that makes sense and as resources allow. So it's kind of very explicitly stating that they're not going to say when the process will be over, and that may take however long it takes. There's not some sort of set deadline by which results of the process have to come out. Madison Webb, one of the key organizers of the Winthrop petition, she said, quote, they're thinking about stakeholders and they're thinking about their endowment and they're thinking about future students and how this may impact admissions and how it may impact future students who want to live at the university. But Kirsten B. Hash, class of 25, who was one of the key organizers of the Winthrop petition with Clive Lawrence, who was also a student, she said she feels that the administration's lengthy timeline for reviewing proposals is very intentional, those are her words, quote, very intentional, 
And she said it was a kind of a method to subdue student activism. She said that, quote, a lot of the ways that the school quells student organizing is by making things slow moving. It's guaranteeing the same students won't be here. We also heard from Albert Chig Lewis Jr., class of 1970 and a former Winthrop resident. He said, quote, I find it exceedingly more interesting to examine the history of a flawed person and try to understand the forces and cultural impacts of their situation than to try to glorify someone in an edifice that bears little connection with the history of the building. Through our reporting and speaking with alumni and current students, we've found that um, this issue doesn't have a super clear consensus. I think opinions are really varied about what should be done with the Winthrop and the Sackler petitions. So what the university decides to do is still yet to be seen. Thank you so much, Natalie and Nia, for joining us to talk through Harvard's reckoning with the denaming process. Thank you. Thank you. Newstalk is hosted by Frank S. Zoe. The producers of this episode were Haley E. Krasnikov and Frank S. Zoe. Our multimedia chairs are Joey Huang and Julian J. Giordano. Our managing editor is Brandon L. Kingdollar. Music in this episode comes from freesound.org. From 14 Plimpton Street, this is News Talk.